Okay, we're going to talk about surface area of the cone. First thing we want to do is talk about some different parts. And so what I have here is a cone, and then I have the net of a cone, a cone that's kind of been cut out and laid flat. Okay, so first the vertex. The vertex of the cone is up here at point B, and that would be in this one, or point B here. It's also known as the vertex. Okay, the slant height, it runs from B to C. It's a slanted height. That's why we call it a slant height. Okay, and same thing would apply here. Uh, we, this could be point C right here. Okay, slant height. And then the height of a cone. Height of the cone is really tough to see in a net format, but on this, our right angle height, if this was a right angle here, which let's go ahead and do, make that. This is actual height of the cone. Okay. okay, so if we call this BA, um, BC, and point B. Okay, the radius would go from A to C. And so in this, this would be our radius. And then the lateral surface. The lateral surface is the surface um, a little easier to see on our, on our uh, two-dimensional, where we have the lateral surface. On our three-dimensional, the lateral surface is this kind of wrapping that does not include the circle on the bottom. Okay. And then finally, the base. And the base, the base is the bottom circle. Okay, so circle A is their base. All right. Now the actual formula, the surface area, surface area means like if you were um, putting a um, the outer outside, if you were um, putting a label on it or say painting the outside of it, it's how much area you would paint, okay? So the surface area of a right cone. The surface area of a right cone, the actual formula is surface area is equal to the area of the base which is pi r squared, plus the area of the sector, okay? So that's pi r l. Now a new variable is l, and l represents our slant height, okay? So if we know the slant height, we know l, all right? And the way they, they come up with that, that formula is come up with by um, using ratios and proportions. So if I just do a real quick explanation, I won't spend tons of time, but let's say I'm just dealing with this three-dimensional shape here. And if I say the, the, if I'm taking the sector area, so the sector area, this is our sector right here, okay, this piece that looks like Pac-Man, and dividing it by the area or the circle area, and so when I'm saying the circle area, I am talking about that same Pac-Man shape. So that would be like if I actually completed the circle, okay, this circle, the big circle here, okay, and that's going to be equal to the arc length. So the length of this arc from C Let's go ahead and um, make this a point here. We'll call this D, okay? And we'll make another point over here. We'll call E. So arc length, we're thinking of arc C, E, D, okay? Over the circumference of our circle. And so once again, when I say our circle, I'm talking about this circle right here. So this is the circle we're talking about when I say our circle, okay? 
and that includes this chunk right here. All right, and so sector area over circle area, arc length of CD over the circumference. And so really when I kind of do the math here, the area of that sector, let's uh, get that off highlighter there, the area of that sector is what we're looking for because we know, like to find the surface area of this, we know this shape right here. This shape, this circle is equal to pi r squared. Okay, well that pi r squared is just that pi r squared. So that would mean that this piece right here, this pi rl, has to be the area to this. Okay, and so the way we're coming up with that, we're using this formula here. Okay, and so, or we're using this proportion. So the area of the sector, so the area of this sector, that would have to be represented as pi rl. Okay, let's see how we actually come up with that. It over the area of that circle. Well, notice that circle, this length right here, here is L, the radius is L. And so rather than having the area of the circle be pi r squared, in context of this problem, our radius is L. So we're not gonna call it r, we're gonna call it L. So pi L squared. And that's equal to the arc length of CD. Well, the arc length, that's this piece right here. Okay, well, how long is this? Well, that length right there is the same length as the distance around the smaller circle because what happens is as we deal with this, you know, it may not look like it, it may not be, a, be the best picture for it, but this from C to E to D, C to E to D, excuse me, would wrap completely around this outer edge of the circle. Okay, and the outer edge of the circle is measured as the circumference of the smaller circle, which is two pi times the radius. So let's call this r. So two pi r. And then over the circumference of this entire circle. Well, the big circle, that's two pi r as well, but r isn't r, it's l, because we've got to distinguish between the two, two pi l. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, move this pi l squared over here to get a by itself, so we have a is equal to two pi r over two pi l times pi l squared. All right, and let's do some cross canceling here. Okay, so we'll put a one under this. We could do some reducing first to get rid of those twos, get rid of a pi. Okay, we can get rid of an l. And so now I'm left with a pi, an L, and an R. So the area is equal to pi R L. All right? So there, there, and there, which is this piece right here. Okay, so the surface area cone, pi R L. We add it to the area of the circle, pi R squared, and that gives us the surface area of the entire cone. All right. Let's go ahead and apply that formula, okay? So find the surface area of the right cone. Well, I know that surface area is equal to pi r squared plus pi r l, which means I need means I need to know a couple of things. I need to know obviously the radius. Okay, so radius they give us here it's 13, and I need to know the slant height l. Well, the slant height happens to be 30. So we just substitute in. Okay. 13 squared is 169 times pi plus, and then pi RL, well, R times L, radius times L, that's 390 pi. If we put those together, I end up with 559 pi. That's the exact value, by the way, and that would be in square units. If I were to round it to the nearest tenth, that would be 1,756.2 square units. All right. Let's try another one here. Okay, so once again, we always want to start out with, we need to know our radius. That's four. We need to know our slant height. Well, I don't know that here, so I'd have to actually calculate it. And they tell us it's a right cone, which means 
there's a triangle in here. The triangle is a four, five, and then we need to find that. So we could say four squared plus five squared equals c squared, or 16 plus 25 equals c squared, 41 equals c squared, so c is root 41. Now let's not actually calculate that yet. Um, let's leave it as a perfect uh, number there. So our surface area, s, is going to be equal to pi r squared plus pi r l. Okay, well pi r squared, that's 4 squared, so that's 16 pi, plus pi r l, well r is 4, l is root 41, and then we have pi, so 4 pi root 41. Okay, that's the exact answer. If we round it, it's going to be, well, it actually has to do the math, it'd be 1,000, or no, 130. Point seven square units. Most likely would give the approximation there. Okay, let's talk about volume. Volume of a cone. Volume of a cone is very similar to volume of a, um, a pyramid. Volume of the cone is equal to one third the area of the base times the height. So in other words, if I were to take and have a cylinder that had the same radius or same base and the same height, it would take three of these cones to fill up that um, cylinder completely. Okay? And so since our base is always the same base, it's a circle, we can actually say, oops, not one half, we can actually change base to pi r squared. Right? The, the base shape is not going to change in a cone like it would a pyramid. So either of these would work. Um, you're going to have to use the pi r squared uh, anyway for the base, so I generally use that one. Okay, so we'll try some here. Volume is equal to one-third pi r squared h. So I need to know the radius, and I need to know the height. And they tell me the height. The height is 7, and they tell me the radius. Radius is 2. So my volume is going to equal to one-third pi times the radius squared, which is 4, times my height, which is 7, which gives me 28 times one-third, or 28 thirds, times pi. That's the exact volume. Can't reduce 28 thirds. And um, if we were to round it, say to like the nearest tenth, that would be 29.3 cubic units, if we actually calculated out pi and divided 28 by 3. So there we go. We try a different one here. Notice we're not given the height this time. So we have volume is equal to one-third area of the base times the height, uh, which I guess area of base, let's uh, just go ahead and list that as pi r squared times the height. And so I know um, my radius is 5. Now my height, I'd have to deal with this right triangle right here. Right? And so uh, that's a, a length of 12. Okay, my slant height is 12. It's the same no matter where I draw the triangle. And so if 5, 12, and if you know your Pythagorean, actually, that's not a Pythagorean triple. All right. Well, this is 5, and this is 12. And if I do the Pythagorean theorem, I get 25 plus, we'll call that h, h squared, make that a capital H, equals 144. So h squared equals 119. So h equals root 119. That's equal to the root of 119. Okay, so we have a right triangle. So if I excuse me, if I do the math here, I get one third times pi times 25. R squared is 25 times h. Substitute that in, and h is root 119. Okay, well, one-third of 25 times root 119, well, that's 25 thirds pi root 119. That is an ugly number, but that is the exact value. You can't go any further with that. Okay, now, 
if you're going to round, which I probably would in this case, it's 285.6. Don't round until the very end. Okay. Well, let's talk about some similar solids. Remember, similar solids are two solids of the same type with equal ratios. Equal ratios of corresponding linear measures, so when you compare the radius or the height or the width. The scale factor K is the ratio of the corresponding linear measures of the two solids. So when we know K, that's our similarity fa uh, scaling factor, or similarity ratio or scale factor, to find, and that's for linear, that's one dimension, where if we want to deal with volume, three dimensions, you'd have to take K and cube it. So the scale factor then becomes k cubed. Or that ratio becomes k cubed, excuse me. Okay? So if I know, if I have two solids and I know they're similar, and I can find out the linear measures, a linear measure, I can get a scale factor. So my scale factor k of this compares 6 to 2. It means this one right here, the bigger one's three times as big as that. Right, if I reduce this, this becomes 3 to 1. So if I want to compare the volumes, I have to change this to this um, ratio to a cube. Okay, I have to cube the scale factor. So I'd have to do 3 to the third over 1 to the third, okay, which is 27 to 1 in terms of our volume. Okay, and so now to calculate the volume of the smaller, I'd have to take the 48 pi, the bigger volume, and compare it to the smaller using this new scale factor. Okay, so cross multiplying, I get 27b equals 48 pi. To get b by itself, I divide 48 pi by 27, which by the way can be reduced. It becomes 16 pi over 9. You could take a 3 out of each of those. That's the exact volume, or if we round it, five point five nine cubic feet. There we got it. All right, let's talk about composite solids. So finding the volume of composite solids, in other words, a solid that's made up of more than one shape. So I look at this, I, I can see a cone at the top, a cone at the bottom, and a cylinder in the middle. And the one thing I note about these cones, this cone has the same height as this cone. They both have the same radius because they're attached to a right cylinder. Okay, so this radius down here, let's switch colors, is also 3. And notice the base of the cylinder and the base of the cone are the same. So really, if I want to, if I want to find the volume of the, of, or the total volume, we'll just say total volume, it's going to be equal to two times the volume of those cones, of one cone, right? I have two cones, so the two times the volume of a cone plus the volume of the cylinder. And those formulas, let's write those out. Two, this, by the way, is called a verbal model. It's kind of coming up with our plan. So the volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared times h. And the volume of our cylinder is just the area of the base, or pi r squared, times the height. Now, note something here. The radius, no matter what we're talking about, whether it be cone or cylinder, the radius is always 3. However, the height depends upon the shape. The height of my cone is equal to 4, whereas the height of my cylinder is equal to 5. Both cones is 4, or 4. That's why we can use two of them. So really, if I'm, if I'm really listing a verbal model, I probably want to distinguish between the height. So that's height of cone, and this one is height of cylinder. Okay. And so now just substituting in things, 2 times 1 third times pi 
radius squared is 9. All right, I'm going to get rid of that parenthesis. Height of the cone is 4, plus pi times radius squared is 9, times the height of my cylinder, which is 5. Okay, so doing math now, well, I see a fraction, but I can do one-third of 9 here, so that's good. That's 3. So I get 3 times 2 is 6, times 4 is 24. So I get 24 pi from that part, plus 9 times 5 is 45 pi. 24 pies and 45 pi are 69 pies, and that is the exact volume, by the way. That would be in cubic units. Or if we were to round, say, like the nearest tenth, that would be 216.8 cubic units. All right. That's it. That's all we've got. So surface area and volume of cones. Good lucky.